A question I get asked all the time is what's the best solar battery for off-grid or when the grid's available? And it's one of those things that comes down to your application and what you want to use it for, and everyone uses energy different. And in this video, I'm going to give you an understanding of the difference between volts, amps, battery percentage, how it all works, so you can understand and have a better knowledge when choosing a battery for your home system. Now, we're going to use the Australian-made Power Plus battery here as an example. I get asked the question all the time, can you buy these in America? And the answer is actually no at the moment. The guys are working on some really cool stuff, but these are an Australian-made battery here down under in Australia. Your best content Power Plus if you have a project in the States that you want to talk about using these batteries in your system. Now, besides the fact that I love these batteries, it's easy for me to talk about. They're actually a really good example to use this as a choice because they have two different batteries with two different types of performance to give us a really good understanding. We can really compare how they work. Let's get, I'm going to show you some settings and really understand battery voltages and why they're so important to understand. So we have a look at both batteries here. If you look at the 57.6 volts, that's what it's saying to charge the battery to full. If you think of a battery, it's actually made up of all little cells. So inside these batteries, I think the configuration is 16S 4P, which means there's like 16 AA size batteries. They're a little bit bigger than AA size, but I'll just give you that for a reference to think about. Little cells. So there's 16 of them all joined up together in series. That's what the 16S means. And you ever talk to a someone that builds batteries, they always like 16S 4P 2P. And it's like, what are you talking about, mate? So next time you're at a party talking about batteries, <laughs> Um, I think the Power Plus is a 16S, so they've got 16 cells lined up in series, which makes 48 volt, and then they've got another, inside one of these batteries, they've got four of those, which gives it the parallel capacity. So you get 16 series battery and four parallel in there to give you your 48 volt and your 63 amp hour battery capacity, which I think the black ones are of these. So the difference between the black and the white battery is that the black battery is more of a premium battery. And if you think about just from a physical point of view, the difference, now what we see on the outside of the battery box, they're exactly the same, the same size battery boxes. Inside the cells though, so inside those cells, what the black batteries happen when they manufacture them, inside the battery, they've actually wound it tighter. So the battery is more, if you think of like a spring, inside that battery, the springs wound tighter. And for a spring, the tighter the spring, the heavier the load that the spring can handle. And the battery is pretty much like that, the difference between the black and the white batteries. So the white battery get more capacity, but the black battery can handle a heavier load. Now with battery percentages, it's a bit more of a guesser meter because there's so many things that actually within a battery that determine the percentage of the battery. Now, as an example, if you discharge the battery really fast, you won't get as much capacity out of that battery. The reason being is because there's heat losses. So the harder something works, the more losses, the less capacity you get. So you'll actually have more losses in that battery the faster you discharge it. Also, the slower you discharge it, the more capacity you'll get out of the battery. Now, that's not going to take a four kilowatt hour and turn into a five kilowatt hour battery if you slowly discharge it and get out like that. With the ratings, most battery capacity are tested at C1, which is basically the charge rate, which is one to one, if you think about it like that. So most batteries are tested out there in the marketplace at a C1 rating. So if it's a four kilowatt hour battery, they're required to put a four kilowatt load on it, run it for an hour and to see what the battery capacity is. Now, if you look at this here and understand down the bottom, it says 0.5 C low load applied. So when they've done this testing to see what the battery percentages are, they've actually put, you know, this is a four kilowatt hour battery. They've put a 2000 watt load on it as an example. And in this example here, a 0.5, a 0.5 C load, it would take about two hours to discharge a four kilowatt hour battery, if that makes sense. So they put a 50% load on that battery and that's how they've come up with these numbers. So it's one of those things, if you're living off grid or you really want to understand batteries is to understand your battery voltages and where they're at. And you see this example here, this is over 53 volts and this example is full. And down at 48, at 48 volts, the battery's empty. And there's an estimate everywhere in between of what those battery volts are doing. Now, if we come back over here to the charge characteristics, you can see it says charge the battery at 57.6 volts, which is a lot higher than that 53 volts. Now, the reason they say overcharge it in this situation, all the little cells inside the battery, they won't charge evenly. So what happens, you want to overcharge it and some cells might get a little overcharge and the battery management system is designed to help fix this. That when one cell is charged, It'll actually stop that cell from being charged and the battery voltage being higher, it'll actually direct the voltage over to the next cell. It wants more charge capacity. So the reason they put higher voltages so they can balance all the cells out and make sure everyone gets charged 
in the battery capacity. And it's one of those things that if not everyone gets charged, all the little 16S 4P batteries get charged up. Over time, you have imbalances in your cells. And that's where you see that you don't actually get the, the rated capacity out of your batteries because they're imbalanced. And the reality is there's not really anything wrong with the battery. The cells just require a really good balance. And sometimes it's a really good slow charge up to 100% and leave it there for a few hours. Here in Australia, we're actually going into winter. So this is gonna be something that's gonna be more apparent for people in winter that have these sort of issues. And it's one of those times of the year that you really want more capacity. And our batteries get a harder time in winter because at shorter days, the battery's not getting rid of those really good long charges. And we've got longer nights. So we're living on our batteries more and we're actually operating our battery on the lower voltages of windows. So some things I wanna show you on a discharge curve to really get to understand a discharge curve and how it works. Now, if you look at these discharge curves here, you can see that at the start of the battery, we were charging that 57.6, quite quickly it drops down to below 55 volts. Now that's just showing there's really not much usable capacity at the top of the battery voltage. And as you can see, as we go along here, the battery volts slowly drop down and you can see the different color lines there and the amps is a different load applied. The easiest way to understand this and what that load capacity is, I personally always like to work things back out in kilowatt hours. In this example here, we'll take the nominal voltage of 51.2, and we're going to times that by, what do we have over here? We had, we'll just pick on the 12.8 amp load. Minimize that, 12.8. So in a watts point of view, with that 12.8 load, they've put a 650 watt load on that, and they've slowly discharged at 650 watts. And as you can see on that discharge curve, the lower and the lower the battery gets, the sooner it drops and falls off a cliff and you've just got no usable power. If you think about the old lead acid battery type drills, like when you get a drill and you're like, and then it go rrr, 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 really slow, where lithium just cuts off. And so what a lot of lithium battery manufacturers do is when it starts to get to this point here where it's just cut off, gone, done and dusted, they just actually cut it off. So you've got full power to the end. In a home battery situation, you'll see a lot of manufacturers allowed right towards the end you can run your lights, TVs, and fridges, but when you put a big kettle or a, a heavier load on, the battery will basically fall through the floor and you have a low battery voltage because that operating in that lower voltage down here below 20%, the battery just hasn't got the strength. And the way I like to think about it is like this. If you just think of a battery just like a human, you know, like for me, when I first wake up in the morning, I'm full of energy, I'm ready to go, and I can take on the world. Come two o'clock of an afternoon, I've got no energy, I'm tired. I just don't want to do anything. I'm grumpy. I want to eat my dinner and go to bed and get ready for the next day. Now, your battery is no different except for it works night shift every single night. So when you get home and the sun's gone down, the battery's just waking up. It's getting into it. So it's on night shift. And so it's worked hard all night to get you through to the morning. It all really depends on how hard you've worked that battery overnight as to what's going to happen in the morning when you get up and turn that coffee machine on. Now, if you're someone that takes your batteries to <clears throat> below that 20% every single night, there's two things I'd probably recommend. It's probably not good for the battery in the long-term longevity of it. You're more than likely to have cell imbalances over time because you're really discharging the battery down the bottom. What I love about the lithium batteries compared to the old technology is you can just actually buy another one and install it in the system and add it to your system and grow your capacity. You really want, if you think about the way you live your life, is you want to be living in this discharge curve somewhere around that nominal voltage. In this instance, it's 51. So you want to live as close to that. So you want to just be above it, 52, 53 volt range, or just below it. You don't really want to get into below that 20% range and try and do heavy loads down there. And that's when the battery is really going to, and it's, it's like, if you think about yourself, if you've been to the gym and you've done 20 reps, that last one always seems the hardest to do and batteries are no different that they've been doing push-ups, if you think about it, all night long, and they're getting tired, they're getting worn out, and they're wanting that sun to come up so that the sun can take over, and your batteries are really wanting at that early time in the morning when it's getting below 20%. It's like, hey, mate, come on. I need some Gatorade or some Powerade back in me right now, and they want that sun to come back up so the sun can take over running your loads and give them a bit of a break for the day so they can get back, get charged, and re-energize and go to sleep and have a rest for the day. <laughs> Um, but if you think about with your batteries, they actually don't ever rest when you're living off grid. They're always on, so they're always getting charged or discharged. So they're always flat out and they're always hot and they're always working when you think about it like that. Now, coming into winter here in Australia, what I'd highly recommend is run your generator and give your batteries a good top up every couple of weeks and make sure they're getting 100%. If you're someone that does cycle the batteries below 20% every single night, what I'd probably recommend is maybe once a week, 
start your generator and make sure the batteries get a really good charge. And probably the best time to do it is actually of an afternoon. And the way I would do this is of an afternoon, when you're cooking your dinner and doing meals and stuff like that, give the battery a bit of a break, turn your generator on, let it run your loads, let it top the battery right up. And what that's going to do is so the next morning when you wake up, you're going to come in, you're going to wake up and you're going to have like, you know, 40 or 50% in your battery capacity rather than being down low in that 10 to 20% capacity range. You're going to be a lot higher up in the battery volts and it's really going to help. It's one of those things as well that I highly recommend if you constantly are going down below that 20%, it's probably time to put another battery in. It's only going to help you and make your battery last longer. Now, at that point, I'm going to touch on warranties and understanding the real difference between the black and the white battery here. Now, the battery voltage is the same. The percentages look the same. Now, with a black battery, it's more likely that with the black battery, you can handle heavier loads. It's going to be less cell imbalances that's going to get out because the battery can handle those heavier loads more through the battery percentages. So you can actually handle more when you get loaded up to 20%. You can handle the loads a bit better than the white battery. And when it comes to a warranty point of view, with the warranty, if you check the data sheets, the black battery at the end of the life cycle is going to offer a higher percentage of capacity. I'm just going to use rough examples here just to talk about different batteries in the industry when it comes to warranties and percentages left. Now, the black battery, the data sheets will be linked in this description down below so you'll be able to see those data sheets and you can check it out for yourself. Most premium off-grid batteries will offer 80% user capacity or over 80% user capacity at the end of 10 years of their warranty. Now, we like the white battery, and when we compare the white batteries like Pylon Tech, BYD, and batteries like that, those batteries will tend to offer a 60% usable capacity at the end of 10 years. Most battery manufacturers have done that to protect themselves because in the situation where if you're a customer, you're someone that's purchased a larger amount of battery capacity, and you're not using down those lower voltages all the time and that lower percentage of the battery bank, it's very likely that at the end of your battery life or that 10-year warranty period that you're going to have a lot more useful capacity than someone that's purchased a lower cost battery and you're always living in that lower percentage or that below 20% of the red zone. It doesn't really matter what battery that you're working with. It's going to affect the long-term performance of the battery. So I'd highly recommend it's one of those things either if you really want the extra storage capacity when you do need it, you're probably better off going to a lower cost battery and putting more batteries in or if you're someone that really depends on real heavy loads and stuff overnight, go more of a premium battery when you're looking at that sort of stuff and look at the batteries that have a higher percentage of capacity left at the end of the warranty period. Now, I'm going to show you a live example here. Now, explain how these battery monitors work. With a battery monitor, it reads the energy in and out of a shunt. And that's how it predicts how much energy is actually in the storage of the battery, of how many amp hours have passed through the shunt. And like I said, the faster you take that load out, the more this percentage is actually going to get out of whack. One other thing is what battery monitors do do, a lot of the better ones like with the Victron, is we actually trick it so that we say, okay, when the battery voltages are over 55 volts, always go to 100%. And that's probably, if you've ever watched, and I know people have done this and they've called me up and said, hey, Mike, this is what's going on. And we look at this charge graph here is what happens is right towards the end as the battery is getting full, well, this is a charge one up here, same, same. It'll actually spike straight up and go to full really quickly. There's two reasons that happens that is because with the battery, when it gets full, the voltages rise quite quickly. And also in a lot of the battery monitors, they're just tricked that when they get to a certain voltage for a certain period of time, so when say, hey, when you get to above 55 volts for longer than three minutes, you can go to 100%. So you might see your battery capacity get to 95, and you stand there watching it, watching it, watching it, and then bang, all of a sudden it jumps up to 100%. And I get that question very commonly, people call me up and say, hey, why has this happened? And it's because of the curve and the way the battery monitors are tricked because they are a guessometer at the end of the day because it's not a consistent load of how we live our lives off grid when we charge and discharge batteries. And I haven't met anyone yet. I've done over 14 years that uses the same energy in the same way. We're all different the way we use energy and how we do things. So I want to say thank you. I hope this has been helpful to get you to understand how battery percentage and voltages work. And when you're choosing a battery for your off-grid solar system, it's going to help you make a better choice because you're more educated and more knowledgeable. If you want to know more and get more into the technical side of this, you can subscribe for more content or down below, check out our app that we just launched. We've got a whole heap of series and courses on the technical deep dive into this stuff. If that's what you're really into and you really want to know and understand this stuff, check out the link in the description below. Until next time, thank you for your time and your attention. Have a great day.